Abner? Let me close my eyes for a Abner? minute. Abner? Companion, I, a big congratulations to all of you as well, because Companion has also been nominated for Best Feature Film, Best Horror Thriller Film, Best Ensemble Cast. Yes! All right. Congratulations <laughs> across the board. Oh, my goodness. It was quite a feat. Everybody here, uh, it, was, it, we, it was over two years of shooting, and then four years in total between writing and editing. So it's uh, it's been a journey. Can you take us through a bit how that's um, affected you as a filmmaker and, and you all as, as actors during this time? Sure, we, I mean, we, we started shooting before the pandemic started. Um, we always knew we were gonna have to do it in two pieces because we didn't have the money. So we shot like the first half roughly and then we were planning on shooting the next part and then everything went in lockdown so we had to postpone it and then at the time nobody you know i don't think anybody really thought it was going to go as big as it did so we were planning on a shoot in the summer and we were debating back and forth and calling it off and i was having to ask everybody if they're willing to come down one of the things that was in our advantage was we were we were shooting on an, basically an abandoned farm so it was just us um and it just so happened that you know texas is a little crazy so they they relaxed the uh they opened everything up for about two weeks which happened to land right when we were planning on shooting um so we were we just went out there and did it and thankfully nothing happened yeah we survived it but it it, it delayed us a little bit it um it has certainly slowed down post because it's um we have a lot of effects in it and things like that and they're most of those guys are either from Russia or India, so they they've all had different things they've been fighting with as well, and uh, so it's been it's been a long post production process. Can you take us through the process of developing that monster? Was it a group effort? Um, did you have this idea, John, from the beginning, um, or did it change along along the process with with everyone on set? Well, it when I wrote the script. Um, I took it to some guys to develop it and we went through, I went through roadmap and developed it with Andrew Kersey. And the first draft of the script was nothing like what it ended up being. Andrew's all about character. So it, it rapidly moved into it. You know, we just both felt like it's a lot more interesting, the personal journey as opposed to being a traditional horror movie. Um, and I, I don't remember exactly when the twist wasn't in there in the beginning. Um, and at some point in the development, I just had this idea. And then I was like, I don't know if that'll work. And I just kept working it and working it. And finally, it, yeah, it all kind of fit into place. And then the question was, is how much, how much do I need to tell the audience before we get there? Um, that was, that's the hardest part is you, you want the audience to figure it out for it to be a good twist um, and not beat them over the head, but you want them to see enough, I think enough, enough instances going in that suddenly makes it all make sense, you know, where like it's kind of been in front of you the whole time. And, um, and I just think it ended up being, you know, I did such a fantastic job of portraying the person who just suddenly faces this. Um, and I think I, you know, I think it's great, especially the, with the mirrored journeys and you look at, um, you know, what Abner's going through really is the kind of the the heart of the film, I think, in a lot of ways. And then Anna develops, of course, across that. Um, but it's supposed to be, it's a fatalist story, um, but it's hiding in an existential story. So the whole time it feels like a movie that you've sort of seen before, you know, it's existential themes, there's no meaning in life, uh, whatever happens, happens. And in the end, you know, it's not what it is, <laughs> so. Based on lessons, what scene taught you all the most? Um, as an actor, as a filmmaker um, in this specific project that maybe taught you a lesson that you'll bring with you into uh, other projects that you may approach now? What it taught me was that 
budgetary constraints and things that seem like they're really important aren't nearly as important as whether or not the story, if, if people can relate to the characters, they'll forgive a lot. And there's things that we spend so much time worrying about that when I look back on it, it's nothing. It doesn't even matter. Um, what matters is, is if, is if you're in it. That being said, I think audio is incredibly important because if you can't hear what they're saying, then you're disconnected. But as far as the visual side, I, I'm classically, I'm a director of photography is where I came from. So I, I'm really hung up on camera. And then when we got out here on this, I was like, we just, we just got to shoot, man. We just got to shoot and give these guys time to act and it'll all work out. It's been a learning curve for me because I didn't have as much, I didn't have hardly any experience working with actors. Um, they were always somebody that was distant for me as a camera guy. But I, this film has really taught me to really believe those people and listen to them and let them do their thing because there's a reason I cast them. And they know the characters in some ways better than me. I may know where the story is supposed to go, but if I let them go, they're going to do their thing. And that's why they're there. So you just let them do it. And if they want to change lines, move things around, it's fine with me, as long as it makes sense. Uh, this was my first um, like feature length film. So there were a lot of learning curves and opportunities to grow. But I think my main takeaway would just be the... Um, to take every opportunity that I was given to be vulnerable in the part that I was cast as. That's something that like as an actress, I have frequently struggled with, but I, I had a lot of opportunities in this script, in this film, throughout the whole thing where there was just moments where maybe you wouldn't think that you could be vulnerable, but you could like specifically with Abner, we always had like deep conversations, <laughs> like every time we interacted. So that was, it was nice to just find those opportunities that, you might not think are there like the hidden the hidden opportunities it was it was really nice yeah i think i think for me um it's interesting watching like the later version of once things have all been put together um because the a couple of my least favorite scenes that we shot and i was like i don't know that one just mm. and then like when i watch it now they're like two of my favorite scenes, like by far. <laughs> and there's, and it's um, one of those things, you know, you, you got to trust the writer, obviously. Um, and you trust, you know, your scene partners and those sorts of things, but, um, you know, just uh, try not to think too much about what's happening in the editing room because you have no say. Um, and I know that, and I've known that from previous projects, but at the same time, when you do a scene and people are excited about it and you just aren't, as excited about it but then you see why they were later um you know especially once you mix in sound and you have you know a score that overlays and it and it adds something else a little bit to it um it's been really fun seeing the progression of it and um in the scenes that I was not excited about turn out to be like my favorites which is just kind of nice you know one of the scenes that I learned something significant from there was a scene towards the end of the movie to where it was beginning to get a little bit dark and then it started getting overcast and we had a, a random Texas storm coming in and we had shots, a fight scene. We had some stuff that we had to get and one of the other uh, actors was already booked on a flight. He was going to have to leave very soon and it started raining and we had a series of shots to get done in a short amount of time and we went with it and it ended up being one of the coolest scenes in the movie and something that i learned from that was watch one uh watching john the director keep his cool because all the eyes go to him like what are we going to do and he kept a, he maintained his cool and he kept us everybody calm like okay i don't know what's going to happen but we're in good hands and then when it did start pouring, it was like, uh, well, we've just been handed lemonade, you know. Um, we were given a gift more than, than um, something to overcome. It, it ended up being really cool. John, what were your influences uh, horror-wise for this? Because with the companions, I kind of got a Jacob's Ladder vibe. And then I saw some, maybe some allusions to Nightmare on Elm Street. Street, but I might be 
extrapolating a bit. Um, so I'd love to hear about your inspiration for the companions. Sure. Um, it's funny you say Jacob's Ladder. That's exactly what we referenced. Um, I said I, I want the car scene in Jacob's Ladder. Every time you see him, I want the head oh, to shake and I want to just rip that straight off. <laughs> so that was uh, <laughs> that was the goal with that. Um, horror is not really my thing, to be honest with you. I don't watch horror movies. Um, so I'm not particularly deep in them. I mean, I watch some horror. I, I guess I like, I, I think horror is a great place. I, I'm really into existential themes in horror as an elevated genre. If you try to make an elevated horror movie, that's not just about like gore and a, I didn't want it to be about a bunch of killing and things like that. Not that I have a problem with that. Some people like that. Um, that's just not really my thing. Um, but it's the companions to me, I wanted it to be a cross between like, it's something that, uh, that, that feeds off of fear and becomes the longer you're afraid, it becomes stronger and becomes more real and ultimately kind of come, becomes something like a zombie. But um, it's obviously a reflection of who you are. Um, hopefully that's obvious. So really, I, I went to our, our special effects makeup, uh, Eric, Eric Obar, and we kind of just looked at some reference photos and discussed. We both wanted them to have like the companions to have some sort of semblance of the person they were before and how they died. So we incorporated that in there. And then we did the, the, the effects makeup was really brutal because it was, you know, it was like a hundred and something degrees every day. We shot in the summer in Texas, which is not the smartest thing you could do, but um, so a lot of it melted. Um, so they would have to, these poor guys would have to sit in, well, I guess the two, Eric and Russell never had to put it on. Anna had to put it on a bunch of times. But, um, so that, that was the tough part about it. But then when I took that footage over to Kamuvia in Russia, uh, we were referencing, um, what was that movie called, the, that war movie where the ghosts are like, a uh, Spectral. I don't know if you remember Spectral, where they're like these 3D, which was all made 3D, so we couldn't do that. But so they kind of started there and they started taking backgrounds. We shot a bunch of plates and they were doing cross, you know, dissolves between the plates and the people and jumping them out of frame and stuff like that. So it just kind of evolved. There really wasn't a other than the Jacob's Ladder, we, we did a lot of a lot of camera effects for that. We're going to go to Anna with this question. Everybody wants to know a lot more about your experience on set. I was very fortunate because I had met John before and I knew two of the other actors that I was working with also from um, university. Uh, turns out I also knew one of the camera operators, Richard Lacey. I was, it was very easy for me to feel comfortable because a lot of people on the crew were women and I knew some of the men that I was working with, but it was definitely out of my comfort zone. I, in the past, have been cast a lot as the ingenue, so I've never had to do a lot of fight choreography or like any, anything kind of gritty and dirty. And I, I after doing this, film and some of my more recent roles like I've found that I really enjoy doing stuff like that that isn't just straight love interest parts. The fight choreography was difficult for me at first. I, I am certified now so it's better, it's easier, I'm better at it. The blood was cool, you know, it was everywhere, very sticky. Tasted all right though. Um, <laughs> I didn't really have very many, oh that's not true, I did have injuries. I hurt my shoulder really bad, badly one time. And this might be gross, but my toenails fell off, my big toenails from, from running around in cowboy boots for 12 hours a day. <laughs> but aside from that, I really can't complain. It was, it was, my toenails are back. I just, they're back. <laughs> but it was overall a good experience, exhausting and draining and out of my comfort zone, but, but definitely something that I'm very glad I got to take a part of. What have you learned about yourself? as an actor, a filmmaker, or an artist in the making of the film that we're talking about tonight? Um, I would say that I learned, I've done short films and that's mostly what I do, but I actually, I really enjoy film. And I think that I, I could continue doing that along with theater from this experience. And um, I also, I know I spoke about getting out of my comfort zone. And I think that I learned that like, you know, imposter syndrome is not something that should hold a person back, like just because it makes you nervous or uncomfortable doesn't mean that you shouldn't give it your all. And I, 
yeah, I, I'm really grateful that I got to branch out for this and I look forward to doing it more in the future. I think for me, the biggest one was um, patience. Uh, mm -hmm. because when we first <laughs> look at John laughing, um, so John brought me in, you know, and we filmed and then it was like a year before we got back on set. Um, and that's a long time to wait and, and, you know, wonder, is this actually going to happen? You know, I had faith in the material, I had faith in the people I was working with. Um, so I, I didn't necessarily doubt it, but that doesn't, equate to patience and so trying to be patient and just go ah, it'll come it'll come just give it time let it happen and um yeah and and it did but it required more patience than i'm used to having to exert i learned that doing does not always have to be big and vocal uh, just like watching uh anna and russell act and john direct a lot of the most um um, motivating things were not necessarily big. Uh, John having a sense of calm in almost every, well, virtually every situation um, mm -hmm. as when adversity would come, his would be when he would actually be, get more strong rather than barking or being frustrated or showing frustration. And I saw and I noticed that he would get more done than other directors that I may have worked with. And I noticed that with watching like Russell act, his calm when he his calm demeanor is a lot more in, intimidating and it's a lot more forceful than if someone was big and uh and same with anna her the way that she was able to uh, carry herself she didn't have to be a she didn't have to do anything to be uh the strong protagonist she just was and so that's something that i learned is you don't have to be it's not always bigger it's better Sometimes um, small and intimate has more of an emotional impact. You know, I, I, I kind of started my career trying to, you, you sort of have to force your way into film, you know, that's just kind of the way it works. Um, and all the frustrations that I felt kind of getting, trying to move up the ladder and all that sort of stuff that they all kind of come back around and the stuff that you were doing that you thought you should be doing something bigger. Um, it's all valuable information and valuable skills that will come to fruition one day if you just don't give up, I guess. Um, everything I learned about shooting fast really came into, into factor here. Uh, you know, there's points where you just have to take over uh, and absolutely trust the people around you to do that, what they're supposed to do. And you just have to stay focused on what it takes to get it done.